Hi! Welcome to episode 3 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, uh, Fluffy Kira on Twitter and Instagram, and I blog at The Corner of Knit and Tea, which is also where I post my show notes. And then finally I have a small hand uh, shop at Etsy, uh, The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn. So, welcome! I found that I really missed not being able to podcast last weekend. I did have a fabulous time, and I will show you the cutie that I spent my time with. That's Roxy. She's about nine and a half months old, and she's just super cute now. She's crawling and getting close to walking, pulling up on everything, and she's just really sweet when she's uh, not having issues with teething, which she was a little bit while I was there, but we had a great time. Um, so, but I'm excited to be back. I kind of missed podcasting last weekend. So let's get right to it. Today's tea is um, Glow Cloud from Adagio Teas. It's iced in my Tervis mug, and this is the first time I've done this tea iced. I drank it hot, and there is a review on the site, which I will link to. Um, but I really like this one cold, actually. And it's been real nice this week because it's been super hot. It's been in the high 90s with heat index this week. Anyway, the tea is Glow Cloud. It is themed after the Welcome to Night Vale podcast. It is a uh, user blend and a favorite on Adagio. It contains mandarin green tea, white peach, uh, purodont tea, cranberry, orange peels, and hibiscus. It's a great blend. Um, they sell it in small containers as well, but I really, really, really wanted the tin, so I bought the whole tin. Anyway, it's great, and I really love it, and all the details to that are linked in the show notes on my blog. So let's get to the knitting. This week is going to be um, a little hard on my ego. I had a couple projects that did not turn out as I intended them this week, and I thought I would go ahead and show them anyway so that you could see um, see that everybody's <laughs> infallible, or not infallible. Um, the first is that I showed you that bag that I was going to felt last week, and I finished it and felted it, and um, unfortunately it is not going to work for what I wanted it to work for. It turned out like this. Um, I felted it through the washing machine twice, which I think was a little bit much. Um, I do like the colors, and I like how I designed it. Unfortunately, it's a super shallow and wide bag. I almost think um, it would be good for like going out and picking cut flowers, um, and perhaps getting some produce at the market, which is probably the way it was originally intended. Um, I had hoped to kind of knit it a little bit taller and make it more of like a project holding bag where I could throw a bunch of projects in and some snacks for the train and whatever and it just did not come out working like that. Anyway, so um, it's probably uh, partially my fault. Uh, I picked a pattern um, and read it and uh, I didn't gauge swatch, I just went ahead and started knitting. Um, and so I ran out of yarn when it was not very tall. I probably could have saved myself some trouble if I'd gotten another ball of yarn and knit a little bit taller. Um, and I think I probably will knit this pattern again because I really like it and I want it to be something that's useful, um, but just in its current state, it's not entirely useful to me. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do with it. I have a friend at work who wants to see it, and may I may just give it to her if she actually likes it and thinks it would be useful, because I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do with it now. So um, that was, as far as I was concerned, a little, a little bit depressing because I spent a whole bunch of time on this a couple weeks ago, and it didn't quite turn out like I wanted. So yeah, that's that one. That's the French market bag pattern by Polly Oatweight. Um, and I used Northampton, which is Valley Yarns, 100% um, wool. Felted it probably a little too much. Um, and we'll probably attempt the pattern again and make some modifications, maybe get a little extra yarn and knit it taller. Anyway, so that's that one. Um, my second disappointment this week was I showed you that beautiful sock blank, and when I last talked to you, I had just the little toes done, and um, I got very far on it. I worked on it a lot on the train, and I worked on it in Chicago, um, and then I came home and I turned the heel, and after I turned the heel, I kind of got this sinking feeling, and I have really small feet. They're six and a half. And I looked at this sock that was huge at the gusset, 
as you can see, I um, knit the toe and then I went and did a gusset with a heel flap, turned the heel, knit the heel flap up, decreased, I'm back at the back at the leg now, and I was all set to go on and I looked at the just the width here and thought that's not good and I put them on my feet and they are enormous. I could probably fit both of my feet in one of these socks. And unfortunately, um, socks don't wear well when they're super huge like that because they rub and the fabric isn't very dense and um, I really don't want these to wear out as soon as I make them and because I'm spending so much time on them, I also don't want them, um, I, I really want to like them and I want them to fit. Um, so. I don't even think I can just rip out the heel. I think I have to rip it out back to the toe and start on a smaller needle size and maybe a few stitches less. And that kind of depresses me because it's a lot of work to get two socks all the way through the heels and move on. So, and of course I'm dealing with um, the two strands at once, so it's gonna be messy when I rip them out and I'm gonna need to probably ball them up and, this project is in time out for now. I will knit them. Um, I will go back and knit them possibly later this year, but at least right now I'm just kind of over them. <laughs> or I can't bring myself to rip them out and start over right this second. So for now, this one is just in time out, and you, I'm sure you'll be seeing it again, but probably not in the next couple weeks. So yeah. That ends the depressing section of the knitting. Um, everything else seems to be going well, so I will show you what I'm working on. I am um, most of the way through the Kraken Cowl. When I showed you this last time, um, I only had some of the tentacles, and now I am almost done with the chart. I'm about 18 rows away from finished. Again, this is the double knit Kraken Cowl. And um, gosh, I can't remember who wrote the pattern, but the link is in the show notes. It is double knit, so I have a Kraken, a blue Kraken on a charcoal gray on one side, and then if you flip it inside out, it is, both sides are wearable. If you flip it inside out, I have a charcoal gray Kraken on a blue background. So I am super happy with this. I knit this all the way up on the train and most of the way back on the train. Um, like I said, I think um, I only have about 18 rows left. I will probably finish this this weekend and block it and take a whole bunch of photos, um, which means I will be done before the 31st, which is when it's due for Camp Loopy. Um, and I am just thrilled with it. This is a super, super fun knit. Um, it takes a little bit of concentration to um, keep the colors separate because every uh, box on the chart is actually two stitches. And um, I find the previous row really kind of hard to read when it's because it's all interlocking loops anyway. And then when you've got something for the color change, let me see if I can, like here, um, you can see that there are, at different spots, there are two of the same color. So right here, there are two blues in a row. And right, right here, there are two charcoals in a row. But it's really kind of difficult to read all of those and pick up all the cues just from the knitting. So um, it has taken me a little while. I, like I said, I had... Um, I had a seven hour ride back. It actually took me 12 hours on the way up. I don't want to talk about that. But so I had plenty of knitting time and I got a lot done and I am super thrilled with this and can't wait to wear it. Um, although it will have to be a little bit cooler because 97 is really warm for a double knit cowl. So a lot of the projects that I do are part of, um, of knit alongs or certain themed things or I also play in the Harry Potter House Cup on Ravelry which has competitions and monthly projects. Um, so most of the projects that I knit are usually between the first of the month and then the last day of the month, the 30th, 31st, whatever. Um, so when I finish something mid-month 
and I have or late in the month but I still have like a whole nother week like I do here I usually try and pick up um, projects that I have sort of abandoned in progress or worked on over multiples of months rather than starting something new right away for instance the new Harry Potter cup term will be starting on September 1st so I have a whole bunch of things that I'm really want to knit but I don't want to cast them on till the first because th for that the projects are supposed to be completed between the first and the 30th of September so what I did is I went back and I picked up a couple um, works in progress that I thought maybe I'd get some work in on this week. Um, the first one is The Log Cabin Cowl. Um, actually, I think it's just called Cabin Cowl. It's by Christine Dirks, Christine Long Dirks. Um, and she, uh, she is a friend of mine. This is a log cabin square cowl. And so what she did is she just used leftover fingering weight to knit a bunch of log cabin squares and then put them together as a cowl. So, and she was super sweet. She sent the pattern to me and I wanted to knit it up with some leftover stuff that I have and take some nice pictures. Um, it's a great pattern, I'm really enjoying it. And it's garter stitch, which is fabulous because I find garter stitch super soothing, particularly after two projects that didn't work out. Um, so I have knit my first square. Actually, I knit it slightly bigger than it calls for. Um, her pattern only calls for three, like basically the center square and two others, and I didn't think that was quite wide enough because this is going to be a cowl like this length, so I wanted to add a little bit more. And these are um, different colors of wool knives that I have in my stash, just I've made other projects with. Um, the dark purple, purpley red, is Fleeterbush, and I'm totally going to mangle these names. The um, <laughs> next one, the lighter purple, is Amethyst. The um, gray is Mouse Young, and the um, outer one is Hortensi. Actually, these are not the worst colors to pronounce, so I guess I'm sort of okay. Um, the only color you don't see there is um, the fifth color that I found. This is Spinaki, or Spinacci, I'm not sure, um, for like a spinach color, and I'm starting that. That's going to be the um, beginning of the square of my second square or the center, the, the small square at the center of my second log cabin square. So basically I'm going to knit four of these and weave in all of the ends and then you mattress stitch them together and then she suggested that you can go around um, either the top or the bottom or both in a crochet edge. Um, I'm also tempted to do a um, I-cord bind off because that'll make a really clean edge and I think that'll be really pretty. And I suspect that I'll probably do it in the Hortensia colorway because that's the one I have the most of, um, but I'm not sure. We'll just have to see how it works out. Anyway, so I'm hoping to work on this a whole bunch this week and I don't know if I can have it done next weekend, but we'll try. Because um, that's, like I said, super soothing, super quick knit, um, just kind of good for the confidence after I've had a couple projects go disastrous on me. Um, always nice to have a little pick-me-up. So the final project, or, or the other project that I pulled out of hibernation, is um, a caramel sweater. I started this in July, July, June, because who doesn't knit a wool sweater in the middle of summer in the Midwest? Of course. Um, it is, the pattern is called Caramel by Isabel Kramer. Um, it is on Ravelry. It is I think it's a free pattern actually. I'm not going to show you the pattern on the tablet because I have so much of the sweater done. Basically all I need now are sleeves. So this is um, it's a sweater that calls for like deep side wraps so that you can leave it open and it can be kind of loose and flowy or you can wear it kind of wrapped like this with either a shawl pin or a button or something here. Um, I am knitting this in the Northampton, which is the Webb's um, House Valley Yarns, their, their house yarn. Um, and the colors are Fawn for the light brown, light green heather for the green, Dahlia for the pink, and then chestnut brown on the bottom, or chestnut heather on the bottom. Um, and I finished the body a while ago and then had a bunch of other projects take over. So I just need to add sleeves now and I figured I could work on those um, in the next week and see how far I get, maybe just one sleeve. Um, but, but get this ready so that I'll have it ready for fall and get it off the needles so that I can start some new projects. Cause now that it's, we're just getting right towards the end of summer and I'm wanting it all the sweaters. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I just keep looking and finding sweaters I want to knit and yarn that I have and I want to cast on and I'm trying to be really good. So that was a slightly long knitting section, but that's what I've got for you there today. Um, now we'll go on to the spinning section, although I completely forgot to do the what I'm wearing. I always forget that section. It should go after tea and that's where it is in the notes. Um, I am wearing Winged Samara. It is a pattern by Chrissy Prang, um, who goes by Left Side Knits on Ravelry. It is a short, um, uh, shallow kind of shawlette. Um, and the yarn, you're not getting a good read on the color because it's really actually quite um, dark blue and beautiful. It is the Midnight Sheep um, in the Superwash Sock base, and she called this the TARDIS colorway. And actually, it's a really nice blue that is not, I guess it's coming in a little better back here. Um, I really love Chrissy's designs. She's left side knits, as I said, and actually she's having a special right now. All of her designs are 50% off. Um, and all you have to do is, let's see if my tablet will cooperate. Ooh, it doesn't look like it will. Um, all of her designs are 50% off right now, and I would totally suggest she has really clearly written shawl pattern designs. She mostly does shawls, although she does some cowls and hats. Um, and I have test knit almost all of her shawls, and they are just, they're fabulous. They're super clearly writ they, written. They have charts. Um, I never find any mistakes, even as a test knitter, um, and I would highly recommend her patterns. So again, she's Left Side Knits on Ravelry, and like I said, right now she's having a 50% off all shawls. There's no coupon needed. When you put it in your cart, the, the price drops by half. So, yeah. So let's go on to spinning. Um, last week I showed you I was working on Hot Hues, um, which is a merino by Prairie House Fibers. It had pinks and oranges and grays, and it is now done and washed and skeined, and it is up in my shop, and I am super happy with it. It's really bright. The gray toned it down just a little bit, but I still really think it's bright and fun and kind of reminds me of a summer sunset. So I am very happy with that one. Again, all the details are in my shop if you're interested. Um, and a lot of you, if you follow me on Instagram, I did post it there as well. So there are pictures there. Um, I also finished up the second skein of the Scrappies. It looks a little different than the first skein. But again, this is the skein that I was replying for um, Come and Knit With Us, their Whippapalooza extravaganza -thon. This was the one that was very loosely plied before. Um, it's all the scrappies and ends of things that I've spun over the last couple years. And um, I really didn't like it because it was so loosely plied. And so I went ahead and ran it back through my wheel and kind of tightened up the ply. And I do have a project in mind for these skeins. Actually, I've kind of started it, but I didn't bring it today, so I will show it to you next time. So that's that done. Um, last week, I showed you a beautiful braid from 2F by Hand, uh, mixed BFL. It was reds and pinks and grays, um, and the colorway name was Roxy. And I have spun that up. It is now on the bobbin. Now this one I am spinning as singles. Um, they're probably about lace weight or fingering weight, and I want to, I'm hoping for about 400, 450 yards. Um, and I actually have a pattern picked out for this that I will show you um, when I'm ready to cast on, which might be next time, it might not be for a few more weeks. Um, but I am super happy with this. It's beautiful, it's striped up just the way I wanted it to with some of the variations in color, even though they're kind of subtle. Um, and I can't wait to work with that. I did not have time to wind off the singles and give it a good bath today so that I could show you what it looks like. Um, when I wind it off the bobbin, it will be crazy kinky and coily and probably like shrink up into a little ball. So I'm going to have to wind it off. Um, I'm going to wind it off with a knitty knotty to make a skein, which is like basically a big loop of yarn. Um, and tie it off in several places so that it won't get tangled and then I will wash it in um, hot and cold water to make it felt just a little bit. That process is called fulling and then uh, the singles will be set and I can dry them so that they'll dry roughly straight um, and not all coily and then I can wind it into a ball and knit with it as I wish. So I will show you the finished skein next week and then in a few weeks probably you'll see me cast on for um, the project. So I'm very excited about that. 
So the last thing would be what's coming up this week. Um, I have actually done a swap with a friend and she's uh, crocheting me a shawl and I am uh, going to spin a few braids of fiber. And one of the braids that she sent to me was the Southern Cross Fiber Club from this year in April. It is 80% Falkland wool and 20% silk. And it is a beautiful braid. It's got blues and a couple different shades and greens and a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown. And there's even like kind of a touch of red in the brown a little bit. You can see kind of in the middle, red and purpley. And it's just a really pretty braid. And I'll probably do my standard two ply. Hopefully I'll get a sport weight out of this. Um, get like 250, 275, 300, maybe a little bit more. Um, Falkland is one of my favorite fibers to spin. It is long stapled, but it's pretty soft and the silk will add some um, more softness and a little bit of shine probably. Um, so I can't wait to get that on the wheel. I'll actually be working on that probably starting tomorrow. So that is all I have for you today. Um, as I said, I missed you when I was away, and I'm really excited to keep recording. So um, I will be recording next weekend, although it's a holiday weekend and we're going out of town for a wedding, so the recording might not post until Monday evening. Um, and then I will have to miss one more later in September, but I'll get to that when we get there. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast today, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Happy knitting, happy sipping. Happy spinning, and I'll see you next time.